Hello and welcome to part two of the miter saw station build. In the first segment, we handled everything on the lower half, the base cabinets, drawers, and counters. Today we're going to be working on everything on top, pictured in blue. We'll start with some low hanging fruit and get the lathe and lathe tools done, which is the only thing that's on the right side of the blade. Conveniently, my mini lathe fits right underneath this shelf. And tucked away in this corner is a great spot for it because I use it next to never, but it needs a home regardless. As do the lathe tools, so I'll take a second to lay these out in an orientation that makes sense and looks pretty. Then I'll break down this piece of plywood for the backer, making sure that the no ref side is not against the fence. You might remember that from part one. And we'll spruce this piece up with a little bit of paint before adding a dowel to hang the face shield. I'll cut off this threaded rod and use two-part epoxy to secure that in place. The uh, face plate will screw right onto that rod. Then I'll add this block for the knockout tool and the live center, I think is what it's called. Like I said, I don't do much turning. We'll do a nail to hang these wire burners. One more block for a tool rest. And then we'll inset a magnet to hold the wrench that came with the lathe. For the actual turning tools, I've got this piece of PVC pipe that I'm going to cut at, I think it was a 30 degree angle. And then I'll just apply some glue, pre-drill a little hole and screw that into place. And we can get this thing screwed into the studs and load it up with all these tools and I'll never think about the lathe ever again. So now we can move on to the fun stuff. So we'll start by fitting this four inch flex hose to this drop for the miter saw. And oh, okay, so the blast gate popped out. So we'll put a screw into both sides just to hold that in place and maybe some aluminum tape just to shore that up. Now I can see how high I need to make a cutout in the sides of the miter saw shroud that I'm about to build. So I'll just mark that on the wall and transfer that over to a piece of plywood. And I'll cut that out with the jigsaw. And I'll sand that edge as the flex hose is going to be rubbing up against it. And I'll test it and make sure that everything fits before painting these two pieces black to match the rest of the miter saw station color scheme. I'll go ahead and put the sides of the dust shroud on now because I need them in place to reference the size of the hardware storage. It's going to be to the left of the blade. But I'll leave the top off for now because it's going to make it a lot easier to hook up the dust collection without that in the way. Alright, so I have a few obstacles to avoid in designing these banks that hold the hardware bins. On the far right, I have to fit underneath this dust hose so I can fit a 3x3 three three bank here. The next bank can extend up four levels before running into the electrical outlet. And to the left of that, I can go up six and still fit underneath the flag. Then in red, I'll put a glue and adhesive holder to break up the grid system of bins. And finally to the left will be a four by six bank. I'm gonna make these banks out of half inch plywood to try and minimize the unusable space as best I can. I'll design the cut order so that I can leave the fence in the same place, which is the depth of all of the banks, because every piece has the exact same depth, which is 10 and 7 eighths inches. Then I'll move the fence and knock out all of the other pieces. For assembly, I could have gone with shallow dados, but glue and nails is going to be plenty strong to hold this up, especially considering that there's going to be a back that locks all of the pieces together. And then we'll test the fit of this before we go any further and make sure that the bins go in and slide freely. In test fitting the second bank, I noticed it was a little proud of this outlet cover. So I'll mark a line where that intersects, take it off, and we'll try and use the belt sander to bring this down the line. That doesn't really work, so I'll switch over to the random orbital. That also is giving me problems. I was a little fearful of putting this on the bandsaw, 
And it did jump around once, but uh, the cut came out. If anybody knows the proper way to trim an outlet cover, please let me know, other than get new paper on your belt sander. Since plywood edging is notoriously ugly when painted, I'll use some wood filler and just try and fill in some of the big screaming voids before I sand and go to paint these. Now that all the banks are in place, let's talk about the design decisions and how I'm categorizing the hardware that I use. I consider picking out the correct hardware as a decision tree. In this graphic, each letter represents a different type of hardware. You've got a few colors and a few sizes. I want my first decision on the tree to be unambiguous, either it is or it isn't, impactful, it doesn't help if your first decision only breaks up your total pool into 5% A and 95% B. Also I want the fewest possible answers to my first decision, either A or B, and not A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or H. In this example, the best first question is, are the letters in the box or out of the box? It's unambiguous, either they are or they aren't, it's impactful. It removes about 50% of the letters, and it has the fewest possible answers, yes or no. In this real world example, the first logical choice to make for me is, is it a screw or is it not a screw? I didn't want to start taking up some sorting criteria with this answer, a row, a column, a color. So what I did was everything to the right of the red glue compartment is a screw, and everything to the left is not a screw. Now over on the screw side, my second criteria was head type. I did this for a reason. If I chose size next, then the third choice, let's say it's head type, I could not put in a logical order. Phillips, square, Torx, which one comes first? I guess you could do alphabetical, but it makes more sense to do size in a increasing order as your third decision. Sometimes I like to be a little extra, so I printed out the labels with a picture of the head type. I did that thing that you sometimes see at Home Depot or Lowe's where they have a physical example uh, underneath that box of screws. On the non-screw side, each row is very similar. So we've got carriage bolts, lag screws, and machine screws on the same row, along with eye bolts, nuts, washers, and brackets. And then below that is cabinet-related hardware, bumpers, hinges, cabinet hardware itself, and hanging. Hanging kind of leads into nails, tacks, anchors, and leveling. Next row is tools, which is mostly leftover Allen wrenches and some other weird stuff, locks, electrical, and magnets. My daughter said that one of these had to be for toys. So we've got that, hose clamps, and zip ties. For your third or final decision, it should be specific, but know when to stop. If you had unlimited space, I suppose you could do self-tapping, zinc-coated T20 pan heads and have that as a separate bin. Also, how difficult is it finding what you need within a single bin? If you need a white plastic washer versus a metal-colored metal washer, is that going to be really hard to pick out if they're in the same bin? I don't think so. And if you have the same U-line bins that I've got, they come with these little dividers where you can put kind of specialty offshoots in the same bin. And I do think you should have a junk drawer or a miscellaneous. Going back to this example, note the four. Because I've got things like this ball bearing, whatever this thing is, whatever these guys are for. Before we move on, I want to show you this glue rack. So on the top row, we've got Type On 2, which is my go-to, along with the glue roller. And then the next row is Spray Adhesive, Type On 3, and Elmer's. The third row is Thick CA Glue, Thin CA Glue, and the Activator Spray. The fourth row is Other Super Glues, uh, including two things of 5-Minute Epoxy, some Gorilla Glue, and some E600, I think it is. The last row is silicone glue accessories, uh, the spreaders in a little tray. And at the bottom on this door, 
is blue tape and duct tape and then you can open that up and have some extra tape storage including double stick tape and other specialty tapes. I'd like to put my Craig form in here but there's three problems with that. First being that I'm in the way of the infeed side of the chop saw. But we can get around that by raising it up. The second problem is dust collection. We have a port out the back here and if I have it pushed completely against the wall there's no way to access that. But in using this, what I found is no dust comes out the top and you end up with a nice pile underneath when you're done. So what I'm going to do is cut a hole in that raised platform so that all the dust will drop down into a, a dedicated space underneath it with an access point so I can just shop back that out when I'm done. The third problem is plywood running into this green hardware storage bin. So I'll solve that by putting this entire thing on a very short drawer slide so I can pull it out just enough to get clearance. Building this platform is pretty easy. I just cut out the pieces that I needed on the table saw, drilled a couple pocket holes, then I'll drill holes in the corners and use a jigsaw to cut out that opening, and I'll screw it all together. Then I'll use the raised platform to trace and cut out a hole in the top. We'll put our drawer slide on the bottom and on the underside of the top and stick that together. So basically what we have is a seat with a hole in it where something can put something else through that hole. And we'll screw that into place and test it out and make sure it works. Thanks for hanging out during this build. Hopefully there's something you can take away and implement in your shop. We're gonna save dust collection for part three as I'm still waiting on some fittings to arrive in the mail. And uh, the stop block is currently gluing up. So you've got that to look forward to as well. See you then.